the STM 11 series. Eliminating risk and hazard. So in our everyday life, we can be exposed to risk and hazard. Like in our workplace, in our home, or even outside. Risk and hazard have a negative effect, especially to tourism and hospitality industry. It is important for us to identify those hazards and assess the risk to eliminate risk that is associated with hazard. We will discuss more about eliminating risk and hazard that I will discuss later. But first, let's have a recap on what is hazard and what is risk. Risk. Risk is a possibility that harm like death, injuries, and illness might occur when exposed to a hazard. So in tourism and hospitality industry, staff or employees are prone on some risk challenges like for example, a guest who falls sick due to foodborne bacteria that can lead to foodborne illness like Salmonella SPD. Next is hazard. A hazard is any source of potential damage, harm or adverse that effect on something or someone. So basically, in tourism and hospitality industry, there are common hazards that can happen during work time, like getting injuries from incorrect manual handling. In this kind of industry, staff or employees are required for high chance of lifting heavy items such as deliveries, luggages, or tables that can lead into musculoskeletal injuries. So hazards have four classifications. Hazard, ergonomic hazard, chemical hazard, and biological hazard. First is the physical hazard. As we all know, it is the most common workplace hazard like vibrations, noise sleeps, strips, and falls. Ergonomic hazard. For me, it is my first time to hear ergonomic hazard. So it is a physical factor that can affect musculoskeletal system, such as repetitive movement, manual handling, and poor body positioning. Next is chemical hazard. A chemical hazard is any hazardous substance that can harm to your employees. Chemicals like paint, cleaning products, heavy items such as lead, mercury, cadmium, and aluminum. And last is biological hazard. It is a bacteria or viruses that can cause health effects like hepatitis A or B, even HIV and AIDS. These are some examples of risk and hazards. So as you can see, the stairs is a hazard and there is a big chance that someone can be harmed by strip, slips, and falling. The same as the wet floor. So wet floor is a hazard. There is a possibility, the risk, that someone might be harmed by slipping and falling. Let's proceed on some ways to help in eliminating risk and hazards. First is risk assessment. A risk assessment is a thorough look at your workplace to identify those things, situations, and processes that may cause harm particularly to people. We analyze and evaluate how likely and severe the risk is. In risk assessment, there are some things we need to know. These are the identifying, analyzing and evaluating, and also determining. First is identifying. In risk identification, it has to be systematic and comprehensive enough to ensure that no risk is unintendedly excluded. Identifying and recording all the risks is the major priority in this stage. In any case, the fact that some of them may already be known and likely controlled by the management or the organization. Next is risk analysis and risk evaluation. First is risk analysis. This is the stage where the level of risk are assessed and understood. The information that is identified is needed to be analyzed to know whatever the risk need to be treated or not and to apply the appropriate risk treatment. Next is risk evaluation. Well, in evaluation phase, decisions have to be made concerning which risk 
need to be treated and which do not, as well as concerning on treatment priorities. Last is determining, or the risk control. Determining appropriate ways to eliminate hazard or control the risk when the hazard cannot be eliminated. Risk management. A risk management is the process of identifying, assessing, and controlling threats to an organization. Like if you are working as a salesman in a wood corporation, one of the risks can affect your work is to have an injury like sprain, strain, and cuts from lifting doors or other furniture from your workplace. The same in tourism and hospitality industry, including hotels, restaurants, airlines and cruise lines many risks can happen like foodborne illness due to improper handling and sanitation of food like in risk assessment risk management have ways too to help in eliminating risk and hazard first is the elimination and substitution the most prepared method of controlling risk is to eliminate the hazard altogether in most cases, the elimination is not feasible and when possible, substitution is the best approach to hazard mitigation. When possible, substitute less hazardous agents in place of their hazardous counterparts. This is also applies to conditions and activities. Next is engineering controls. The third most effective means of controlling hazards is engineered controls. These do not eliminate hazards but rather isolate people from hazards. Capital costs of engineered controls tend to be higher than less effective control in the hierarchy. However, they may reduce future costs. Engineering controls includes designs or modifications to plants, equipment, ventilation system, and processes that reduce the source of exposure. Next one is administrative controls. Administrative controls are controls which alter the way work is performed. They may consist of policies, training, standard operating procedure or guidelines, personal hygiene practices, work scheduling, and etc. These controls are meant to minimize the exposure to the hazard and should only be used when exposure cannot be completely mitigated through eliminations or substitution or engineering controls. And the last is Personal Protective Equipment or PPE. PPE should always be used as a last line of defense and is an acceptable control method when engineering or administrative controls cannot provide sufficient protection. PPE may also be used on a temporary basis while engineering controls are being developed. Personal protective equipment are worn by individuals to reduce exposure such as contact with chemicals or exposure to noise. So we're done talking about the ways to help eliminating risk and hazard. To sum it all, hazard is everywhere that can risk someone's life, that can cause death, injuries, and illness. We cannot control the things that are meant to happen. We can avoid it by following the guidelines and intense study of the structures that we'll use in every workplace. Signs, symbols, and instructions are one of the most needed things in the structure to alarm and prevent them to harmful effect caused by any potential damage.